you say? Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. <laughs> I'm here. Oh. 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 Oh, yes. Hi. That's me. Irena, and thank oh. you very much for you was able to find that time. Okay, you're welcome. Let's let's start and and but what do you want to know from me? The main idea for us is really can it be applied uh, for stay for stay? It's my question. It's my inquiry, but also we have people that can give more questions. Okay. And then what, do, what do you mean by can it be applied for state? Uh, for state, I mean, can it be applied as a, um, for example, in, in one municipality, not oh, yeah. as inside of a company, but as a region, can the region really manage this way as you manage your, mm -hmm. your activities? So. Yeah. Okay, as, um, I don't know if you know, but I, I am a nurse by background. Uh, I studied economics before um, and I've been working for 15 years as a nurse and for 10 years as a manager director in two home care organizations in Holland um, and I, I uh, during my career I had a, an idea that um, patients can be helped um, in different ways um, when I worked myself as a nurse in the 80s and as a community health nurse, I think it was the most effective period. So we had um, high educated nurses who were responsible in the community for prevention, care, cure, were uh, working in a, in a neighborhood, had good colleagues, were closely working together with the family, doctor, CPs, social workers. Uh, so we had a, quite a good primary health care system in uh, in the 80s and then it developed um, because of political choices uh, market incentives it developed towards more commercialized home care uh, and then it became very task oriented so then um, a lot of different people were delivering tasks on patients at home um, and it was in the period that I was manager and director and I saw that it got worse and worse because the quality went down, the costs went up, we got more and more complex organizations and most of the nurses got frustrated by the way they were working, a lot of bureaucracy. So in 2006, together with some friends, uh, we, we, we developed this plan. We said we want to change the discussion about uh, healthcare in Holland. So we are not, we are not improving. We are um, uh, creating um, more and more problems instead of better solutions. So that's so that was the reason that we said we go back to some principles of the 80s, uh, uh, focus back on the craftsmanship and the self-organized way of doing things, and also support it by. Um, smart IT. So, and and my in my opinion, we don't we don't need management. So I was as being a manager, I said I said to my colleagues, uh, it's I think it would be much better if we weren't there. So if people just go there, we are more obstacles than supporting people. So that was my uh, my idea about <laughs> how organizations worked in general. Let you see a, a, a lot of things which happens in organization um, manages themselves things that they are caused by them. And my opinion was that uh, most things would be much better if they weren't there. So that's so that was the reason that I wanted to create an organization which was based on intrinsic motivation of um, nurses. Uh, and my idea was that if nurses are working together in small groups, they can organize everything themselves. So, uh, and especially nurses are very creative uh, and they are the best organizers you can find. So that's what we did in 2006. We, uh, I resigned from my job and I started with three other nurses, just a small team, one team. And 
and then from the start we got a lot of uh, attention a lot of publicity uh, and then we got nurses all over the country who said oh can't, can't we join can we also do this so then i had a lot of meetings all over and uh, every time again after uh, usually in the evenings after church in the evening these nurses said can we can we start tomorrow so i said i just should think about it but uh, i think you can so then we hired them we are a foundation and we said okay this foundation can uh, grow can make the contracts with the health insurers and we can uh, build the activities and then we so the idea was that we can create an organization like this so since 2007 uh, we have had many nurses all over the country who applied for jobs and still we have 100 200 people per month uh, coming in and joining us and these teams are just growing they have clients uh, they have referrals from doctors from hospitals from patients themselves and they're growing every year so we're growing every year with um, 1500 people um, last year we grow with um, 40 I think 40 million euro so it's it's an, an, an organic grow we don't have we don't make strategic plans of policy plans it's just growing organically uh, because people are very satisfied the patients who get the care are very satisfied and the nurses are very satisfied by the way they're working um, we have um, uh, we have been the best employer in Holland for five years now and we have the highest satisfaction rates and we have the lowest costs so that's that's a good combination um, and um, the way we organize uh, leads to a back office that's but i'm sitting here that's the head office and we have 35 people working here at the head office taking care for for 10,000 people at the moment so and 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 at this moment we are in a takeover for a, um, an organization who delivers more social care so domestic care cleaning the houses and so on so the coming month uh, more than 3000 more care workers will join us so that and that will be a transformation of this organization we only get the workers so we don't get the management so it's only the workers who are dealing with clients and then we have the the um, other countries like in uh, japan so we started to work in japan and in sweden and in united states uh, and we're now i'm just back from singapore because it's the singaporean government wants to experiment with our model in china we started taiwan wants to start uh, australia canada um, and and i've been uh, all these scandinavian countries um, are more or less ex experiment we, we we have an organization in sweden called granvart granvart Zwirich. Uh, and all the european countries most of them are interested we are working with small groups in england and scotland and in germany and I think that uh, your country is a very uh, interesting country because I there were there were some documentaries on television about uh, the way your government is dealing with things and uh, I think from the Eastern European kind of former Eastern European countries you are very successful in implementing new ideas. That's what what I heard, but. It's nice to hear this from you, but I also, yeah. when listening to you, I was thinking, what, what is needed that you could come to this country? And, you know, we are now in the transition from as many these post-Soviet countries, they are in transition from centralized system. Yeah. Now the task is to decentralize it. But the idea is that uh, mostly uh, the state is thinking that they have to move the German way to develop um, the uh, system that you already are leaving because you said yeah. this expert way thinking systems. Yeah. And 
some people they just said to me in the United States that you know you don't have to read it to learn on all the mistakes you can already try to apply yeah. the most the most most efficient models so therefore they and they said to me don't you want to, to talk to Burtzor because it's yeah. flexible it's easy your country is small so yeah. community based so, so I yeah. was just thinking how would you uh, what uh, key key indicators are necessary to develop such yeah. such model for for services social or care services yeah. if to look from the country perspective from region yeah. perspective what is needed i think it's very important that there is um uh, there is a policy which 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 uh, supports this idea like um for for example in japan the japanese government said we want to um make a transition from institutional care to care in the community. So the same uh, thing. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. okay. So that's, I think that's very important. Um, the, the reason I went to, um, uh, to Singapore was also that uh, the, the, the Singaporean government knows that they have to, have to move from uh, more hospital care to care in the community with a high level of, of, of uh, expertise and, and knowledge. Um, I, I have, uh, I didn't tell you yet, but I have done a project for four years in the Ukraine. Mm. From, from 2001 to 2005, I worked together with uh, five hospitals in Odessa who were changing the hospital care towards more primary health care. So um, I've, I've have, a lot of experience and and this this project inspired me to start with Bootsa in Holland so I'm really uh, uh, inspired by the the developments in, in Eastern Europe and I think that um, I was thinking that you probably have the same history in how uh, the policies were developed in in the period that before your country became independent it, it shall be a bit the same as, as, as in Ukraine or not, I think. The, the core history of those Soviet countries, it was the same, like, but yeah. we are a little bit, have more freedom and more market economy than Ukraine, so uh, okay, yeah. quite a lot of, um, yeah, they already are developed and, and uh, especially with them joining your, um, European Union, and now is there really a very strong pressure from European uh, European Union for us to really be, uh, make it community based service, yeah. not not institution based service. Yeah. No, but 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 I said this this policy of the government is important, and also um, is it supported also by uh, by some some uh, payment system? So is the, do we have a a national payment system or a uh, health insurance or something like that. Um, uh, I was uh, um, some months ago I was in Ch the Czech Republic and uh, we also discussing uh, with some people starting the the principles and the model there. But I, I think um, what would be helpful is that um, um, with some people to organize some small conference or something, uh, perhaps with some people from from uh, government or policy or, or other stakeholders and discuss it what the um, the opportunities are uh, for, for me uh, I'm very willing to come to, to your country and uh, talk with, with you and find out if there is a way to to work together so that's that's no problem okay so that's great I take this and I will let you know we are in the process now and I'm trying really to make the water more messy here to make more problems that we are really not going to the expert way so i hope i will manage to do this a little okay. bit not alone but with some people who already yeah. have the conference and also i have a list of some questions really practical questions yeah. from okay we also have in the conference the ceo of one one let's say nursing company social care institution yeah. so can i give you some questions yeah, please. Okay, please. thank you. Yeah. And maybe then I would like also to other people to give questions. But one of my questions is that 
how do we make that all employees implement their duties and that they move in one direction? So how? <laughs> <laughs> they move in one. Why should they move in one direction then? I don't that they really do not start making the, their own businesses around. I just tried to interpret oh, this question. Oh yeah. <laughs> or they uh, really do no, what the organization is doing. Yeah. No, but but I, when I started, I said, uh, what we are doing is for most nurses the most logic thing to do. So when you become a nurse, uh, you want to help patients. And you want to help them in a way that they can help themselves again. You want to support them. Uh, that their quality of life is as good as possible. So that's, uh, as being a nurse myself, I only worked with nurses who had the same kind of ideas. Um, the way it's working uh, in these small teams gives a, a lot of, um, you can call it social control. So everybody knows what everybody's doing. So you know each other very well. Usually the teams which are starting are more or less friends. So they're good colleagues. Um, some of them know each other quite quite long. Um, so that's one. Then uh, they hire their own colleagues, the teams. So they are very critical about who's coming in. So they check if they have the same philosophy, if they are also having the same values, uh, these kind of things, and if they fit in the norms and the vision of the teams. Um, then they have meetings, so every week or every few weeks they discuss cases with each other, so they know about each other's ideas. And, and then uh, another thing is that when something goes wrong um, with one of the patients, you hear very easy that something's not very well. So if, if one of the colleagues is doing bad things, for example, which doesn't happen often, um, but then you easily hear it uh, when you are coming at this patient. So most patients are visited by by several uh, nurses. So these are, but the most important thing is that it's just to focus on on positive things. So not on negative. So not not assuming that people people don't want uh, to do things uh, properly. So I, I trust all the nurses. I don't have any reason in these 10 years we are, we are celebrating our this year, our 10th anniversary. Uh, we have 10,000 nurses. Uh, we served for 600,000 patients and we didn't have one complaint. So in an, an average home care organization in Holland, which is much smaller, has 50 complaints a year. So you can say, that by working this way, it works very preventive. So everyone takes their responsibility, and you see that this ownership, feeling responsible for what's happening in your environment, is much stronger than when you're working in a hierarchy. So, uh, so I say the, the chance that anything goes wrong is much smaller than working in an other organization where you're more, uh, you can work more anonymous. So if you if you work in uh, the where organizations I worked for, I see a, I saw a lot of things that you can hide uh, from other people, and you are not. It's not very clear what you're doing. That's not possible in our way of working. Everybody can see what you're doing. So these are some things. But is that an answer to your question? Yeah, it's also yeah. the paradox of uh, the paradox of of trust. Sometimes we talk the trust shall be gained. You have to prove your trust, but I hear from you that you just trust and the trust. Yeah. trust no, but it's the opposite. It's the opposite. I, I don't believe that you have to gain trust. Uh, I think um, if there's somebody who has to gain trust, it's the leader. So it's um, the, in, in, in Holland, there has been a lot of research on what kind of professions are trusted by, by the people, by the citizens. And people trust doctors, nurses, teachers, uh, and they don't trust managers. So there is a big, big trust. So I, I should, um, this discussion, I think that um, I, um, there is more, uh, should be more critical view on me 
as, as, as the CEO than on the nurses. And I, thank you. And I also heard that there is an, an amazing IT system because sometimes we discuss how you create this uh, feedback system that it's not only like culture, but some su yeah. support is given for feedback. So yeah. could you open up a little bit about your IT system or the way you, you manage the feedback? Yeah. Yes. The, um, I just have here a book about um, Professor Nonaka. I don't know if you know Nonaka, but he's, he's um, together with uh, Takuchi, uh, two, two Japanese professors who wrote a lot about knowledge, about knowledge development and tested knowledge. And I was very inspired by him uh, and based on his theories, um, we together with the nurses, we built an IT system. So we said it's all, it's all about information and knowledge uh, and how can you share uh, knowledge and information in a way that it leads to new knowledge or to um, high um, high performance in every team. So what we did was together with the nurses think about how, how can we support you in your daily work in a way that um, knowledge and, and information can be shared in, in a very simple horizontal way. So everybody should be have access to all kind of knowledge and information. So that's all on the web. But it's also it's also working like a Facebook, like everybody can share good ideas, which can be picked up by other teams. And then it creates a lot of innovations this way. So when someone in Amsterdam thinks about, um, let's do a small experiment with uh, people with dementia and it works out well, then teams in other places are doing the same. So that, but that's a way of not top down, but bottom up, creating all kinds of small experiments, which leads to a higher standard, new knowledge, new standards. Then we have a an, an, uh, system we call the Omaha system. That's a classification system for problems, interventions, and outcome. So we said, if we measure the results of every intervention we are uh, performing, we're doing, then we can see um, trends and we can see patterns of what can be done best with, for example, people with chronic diseases or with uh, people who are terminally ill. So we, we, we make an assessment, we do an assessment, uh, we make a care plan together with the patient and we monitor uh, the um, development with these patients based on three three measures: st uh, status, uh, behavior, and knowledge. So we said, if if people know more about their situation, about their disease, about the uh, prognosis of the the, the um, how it will develop, then they probably will be more able to handle it. Uh, then. Uh, motivation is an important point so so if, if people are motivated to deal with their for example with the diabetes then they will behave differently than where they're not motivated so behavior is an important issue so knowledge and behavior are measured on a five-point scale and we say okay in this situation perhaps four is the highest we can achieve and then you're going to train people and give them the information and stimulate them to act the way you think they could do. So this is what we measure. And then, and then we have now 200,000 files, for example. And then we can do research. We're doing research with the university. And we're trying to find out what kind of interventions lead to what outcome. And at the moment, we developed, together with the ministry, we um, achieved that it, this Omaha system becomes a national standard. So I was thinking, yeah, yeah, this is amazing. But I was thinking for me was a very deep insight that you are not only providing service, but you are really educating patients. So yeah. it's like, uh, you know, like create a real ecosystem here uh, with this. So it, it seems uh, very, very new, just new, new approach. So 
I would like to make my egoistic pause here and ask maybe somebody <laughs> in the group yeah. also have some questions because I can continue. <laughs> but yeah, please let me know. Uh, yes. I would like to have a question. Yeah. Hi, yes. Uh, my name Hi. is my name is Birgit. Uh, I'm not from Lithuania. Irina just invited me because we are working in the network together. Uh, I'm a consultant from Austria. And my first question is, do you have already contacts into my country? Yeah. And the second question is, um, you said there need to be a kind of policy um, that the uh, healthcare needs wants to shift more into community from, uh, from hospitals. Mm -hmm. What is about hospitals? Do you have any experience that they can adapt a similar system? Or do we just leave them aside and say they are as they are? Yeah. <laughs> or is there a new way of cooperating with them and, and changing them? Because I experience them, I have some clients, some private hospitals, I experience them as very traditional. Yeah so easy in really changing things there so there might be opportunity also for them to learn yeah. something from your system yeah, the first question is I've, I've been several times to austria um i was at a conference which was organized by the arbeitskammer oh, yeah. um, and there there was a research done by um someone who called uh Lauksen ring or something like that uh, so there have uh, there have been some international researchers and and uh, this was European research and he um, he said that the what he found was that what we were doing was the best practice so so that was the reason to organize the SOA um, and um, I'm invited again to discuss uh, in Austria for some projects so that's. Okay. So I, I said, perhaps you can just choose a small region and start something small and you can see. Yeah. So it has, it not, you don't have big risks then, you just yeah. can, can use the, uh, the money which is already there. But then you use it in a different way and that's, mm -hmm. that's also happening in, in Switzerland now. So I'm, yeah. I think that Switzerland and Austria can, uh, can be a bit, bit similar. Um, what you said about the hospitals, I'm, um, I've, I'm invited a lot by Dutch hospitals, so they are uh, asking me to advise them to what they should do to change uh, the hospital to a more patient-focused, patient-centered way of working. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the hospitals are, are doing it already, uh, um, but um, what I said is that because of the payment system in Holland, um, uh, hospitals became very complex organizations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, in my opinion, I started to work when I was 20 in a hospital. Uh, I worked for six six years in hospitals. And if you look at um, the uh, routines in a hospital, mm -hmm. then it, should, it shouldn't be too difficult to use a ward like uh, 30 beds or 24 beds mm -hmm. as a cell. And just work with the self-organized team in a, in, a, in a hospital. So um, I think it it could be uh, um, used. This uh, whole idea about self-organizing can be done in hospitals. It, it can be done in schools, mm -hmm. uh, in in uh, with the police. I'm, I'm advising police. Next week I have a meeting with the Ministry of of Education about how to adopt the principles in schools. So mm -hmm. so it's a discussion which is much bigger than only healthcare. It's, it's how do we think about organizing? And, and I think some of you read the book of Frederick Laloux, eh? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So that's what I see in a lot of countries that we're struggling with these complex systems and we need to go back to um, more creative ways of organizing, yes. more sensitive to the environment mm -hmm. and more um, more humanized, I should say. <laughs> Is this? Uh, I have a question. No? Yeah. Uh, for example, talking about hospitals, my experience is that in this kind of organizations, the question of status hierarchy, what is a doctor, what yeah. is a nurse, is very, very like important. Yeah. So, how do you deal with it? Yeah. 
I don't deal with it. It's quite <laughs> traditional and really embodied. Now, I was, as I said, I was in um, Singapore this week, and um, it's in the Asian countries. It's also an uh, an issue. Uh, but then I said I was talking with a nurse, and this nurse was very, very energetic and very assertive. And she and I said I asked her, I said, do you have problems with doctors? Mm. She said. I don't think so. I said, <laughs> she said, I think doctors have problems with me. But uh, I think that, uh, of course, in every country has their own history and development. Mm -hmm. um, and, and hierarchy and status are, um, I think, supported by the way you organize. Mm -hmm. If you look at it on an individual scale and an informal relation, then I think people just want to have good relations. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what I say to our nurses. Mm -hmm. Try to create good informal relations and trust on your skills. When your skills are good, mm -hmm. the the doctors will reward you. So so that's one thing I say. The other thing I said is nurses usually have more social skills than doctors. So mm -hmm. if if we are a bit <laughs> um, not not too nervous about it then we can just handle the disappearance of the doctors. It's like trust to human nature, yes? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but but in, uh, in hospitals, and, and when you, you started, we started this conversation, uh, you mentioned the German system. Uh, in Germany, <laughs> the hierarchy is very uh, traditional. Uh, and I think you shouldn't, you shouldn't adopt hierarchies. I think you should adopt humanistic sequence <laughs> because I, I think we are going to a more network oriented way of working mm -hmm. where, where hierarchy will um, have less and less importance. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank but you. it's my, my personal, um, and of course, I, the years I've, I've worked in, in, um, uh, in Ukraine, uh, I, I remember this team in Odessa. Um, where the best performing team was the was the the doctor with the nurses, where hierarchy played no role. So he was. They all wanted to perform, and they wanted. To, they had the ambition to become the best healthcare center in the neighborhood, in in Odessa. And every time I walked in in this healthcare center, you could hear them laughing and and having pleasure with each with each other, mm -hmm. instead of thinking about uh, who's the boss and who's uh, <laughs> important and so on. Yeah. So I, I, I think but what, what we do in our teams is, is say support each other, find informal ways to deal with people around you, uh, respect each other, respect other people, um, and don't spend too much time on status and ego things. Mm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, for, for me, it sounds really interesting, but uh, uh, it's simple to work with the people who are orientated already towards uh, uh, towards people. But uh, when I think about uh, a company, let's say uh, um, the company that is looking for uh, income and it's it's not supported like a, a, on a social basis. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how it would work, especially if we talk about uh, sales, uh, about people who want to, to, not production even, but to, to sell, to, um, how, how that type of organizations could be, uh, could be organized the same way. Do, right. Have you ever seen uh, any company who took it and really has it and uh, didn't went back to where they were before? Um, I think a lot of um, commercial organizations in Holland uh, and in other countries uh, are, are moving towards a more purpose-driven way of working. So you say that if you talk about sales, then uh, it's not just sales because you want to sell a, a something, but it's, it's uh, contributing to something bigger. So... Uh, I think that uh, we're moving from um, uh, a, a shareholder 
um, oriented way of working to a stakeholder. Uh, so it's more important uh, what you're doing, um, for example, for the long term for the community. <laughs> New one. <laughs> Hello. I see. Uh, first, I saw the <laughs> you with the beard, and now I see <laughs> <laughs> another. Yeah. Without, uh, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Dalia, she was. <laughs> so I have to, I had, I had to move. <laughs> um, so, but, um, but, but I see is, is that, if, for example, in the book of Lalu, there is this nice example of um, this automotive company uh, who changed the whole thinking of marketing, sales, and and and. Uh, the, the the um upper the distribution operation um so they may, all mixed it so they made teams where all these different roles were um involved um so i but i i think it's very important but uh, but also what I, this professor nonaka told me when i met him in in tokyo a few years ago he said if uh if um, bigger organizations are not moving towards uh thinking about the higher purpose they won't they won't survive at the end so they just if you only focus on earning money or uh, if that's the I, I don't believe in healthcare you should do that <laughs> so I think it's it's a very bad incentive um, but also in, in commercial organizations I, I should say try to find ways to to uh, to contribute to something bigger than only your company but i think every, every organization can do this i i'm also advising banks so and you can say a lot about banks in holland and england and so on i want to give one uh, also one one question i i'm saving your time but we are discussing a lot here with ceos and owners of companies uh, what could be the first step uh, to, to start? Because when you open up a new company, you can set up a new rules and then it can, you can go. But if the hierarchy is already in the blood of a company and silos already are inside of a company as core culture, how you, uh, what is your opinion about how company could start at least going towards that self-organizing? What could be those first steps? or where yeah. focus company I, I think the first uh, the first thing you need to have is, is the awareness that it's creating better results so um, if a CEO is convinced that it's for the future of of the company of the organization it's better to change that's I think the most important step if, if, if there is not this awareness then you shouldn't do it but if it if there is, if the if the boss or the top level of the CEO has this idea that it's uh, uh, it can contribute to more sustainability for the organization, then it's more or less uh, be, be consistent in what you're doing. Then create some vision and a plan that within a few years you want to change the organization towards a more self-organized way of working. I, I, I supported uh, several organizations this way, and when all the time when the top level was convinced and also had a, um, good social skills to tell and to involve other people in the organization, it went very well. So it were very successful changes in the transformation of the organizations I I supported. But this is a paradox. <laughs> you said that. Your first step was to to see that the boss is the barrier for a company, like to remove yeah. managers. And yeah. also now I hear that the high high level managers they are they are those gatekeepers for such systems to come up into organizations. So isn't this the paradox that then the managers has to make statement that they are not needed or that they have yeah. They have less impact. I don't know. How do you talk to them about this? Because it's a very difficult issue. You cut a, a tree on which you sit. Yeah. Yes, it's what, what's needed. 
So, uh, but it, it's it's a um, uh, for a long period already. It's a, it's a quite a, um, an interesting discussion, in, in, in at least in Holland, but I also see it in other countries. That um, if you if you look at um, the way your organization is structured, uh, also leads to the different costs of that on different places. So, if you have a lot of management, then you can't spend your money on other things. So, uh, so we don't have much management so we can spend our money on higher educated nurses and on innovation and quality so we are much more if you look at from a competitive way of thinking we are much more competitive and that's also the reason that we have grown so fast than other organizations so there is an urge for organizations to think about what do you want to be for the future so, and what I found is that, um, especially women, has less problems with thinking in these uh, status and ego uh, things. So, what I saw is that all the examples, who people who change the organization are led by women. So, and women are far ahead, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> from men. Uh, and it's. I think it has to deal with that uh, women focus more on the long term, uh, and has a more intuitive feeling about what's working and what's not working. So that's what I experience, at least in Holland. Mm -hmm. And it's 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 funny because a lot of men also respond to me as a person. So then we have this ego <laughs> things, and with women, it's more. Just being friends and trying to help each other. And and, and just think about it. I'm I'm very happy to come to your country and discuss. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, you. Yeah. thank you. Enjoy Easter and have a nice <laughs> a nice holiday. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah.